And let me add one more thing. When you pray for someone in, with, that's in a lot of trouble, put a crash helmet on. Sometimes the trouble that's attacking them will attack you because it'll follow those lines of communication. That's not to scare you. That's really to let you know you're doing good. When the spirit that is attacking them tries to attack you, you just put on the whole armor of God and keep on hammering. Our Sunday school classes, you can be dismissed at this time. I'd like to turn your attention to the book of Genesis, chapter number 50. Then we're going to read from Jeremiah chapter 20, and then from Ezekiel chapter 37. Genesis 50 and verse 24 through 26. And Joseph said to his brethren, I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land to the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph took an oath from the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Surely God will visit you. You will carry up my bones from here. Turn to somebody and say, what are you carrying? <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 20. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. Some places that call themselves a church can hold it all back, but I cannot. I will not. Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in an open field, and indeed, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And of course, the prophet responded, Lord, thou knowest. I want to preach from the subject, the bones you carry and the bones that carry you. Let's join together and ask God's blessing upon his word. We love you, precious Jesus, in the mighty name of the living God of heaven. We pray that the power of God would move in this house today in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Smile at somebody. Shake their hand if you're courageous enough to do so. And you may be seated. I hope to provide you this morning a skeleton key to your future. I make no bones about it. I feel like that the Lord has given me a word to help you navigate the next days and weeks and months that are in front of us. I grew up before the internet age, like many of you, and we had to make do when it come to childhood amusements. But it's amazing what you can come up with if you just mix a little boyish imagination with uh, some little rubber toy or some artifact. I had a favorite little fantasy as a kid, and that was that somehow I came across a skeleton key. Now, I thought a skeleton key was just one of those old-fashioned looking medieval keys that just opened simple locks, but really that there are and such a thing as a, they call them master keys in today's vocabulary, but there are keys 
that they grind down the center shaft in such a way as it bypasses, I guess, a lot of the detectors in a lock, and it can open, uh, like a master key, several locks uh, with the same key. I want to give you a skeleton key to your future today, and I hope that uh, the Lord will help you, because we sing a song sometimes, there's not, the devil can't make a lock that the Lord doesn't hold the key. Perhaps somebody feels like your future is in lockdown. Like, as far as the eye can see and the imagination can contrive, it's going to be the same old, same old. Well, that's no place of mind for a child of God. That is the mindset of a scoffer. It is the scoffer who says, all things continue as they were from the beginning. Where is the promise of his coming? I want to leave you with a promise today. I want to tell you that the God that we serve is not just a promise maker. He's a promise keeper. And there isn't a promise that he hasn't made in the word of God that he will not keep. If you're suffering from sickness, he promised to heal you. If you suffer from loneliness, he promised to send somebody into your life that will alleviate that loneliness if you'll remain faithful and patient. If you're suffering from some kind of an economic shutdown or slowdown, the God that we serve is a God who can bless above and beyond all that you could ask or that you could think. Does anybody believe, does anybody really believe that God's a promise keeper today? Amen. 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 Now there are some keys that won't open a thing. A donkey. And a monkey. But I want to give you a key that will open something up. Peter said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Therefore I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. And whatsoever that you bind is bound, and whatsoever you loose is loose. Somebody shout it with me. There are keys to the kingdom. Well, you can't have keys to one kingdom without having keys to another kingdom. So let me just, this isn't scripture. This is me by way of trying to explain this that you can understand. There are keys to kingdoms. Because if there's a key to the spirit realm of God's kingdom, then there must also be a key that will help us undermine, overthrow, amen, and bring to demise the kingdoms of darkness. God did not fill you with the spirit to be controlled by demon forces. God did not anoint his church so that we would be subject to invisible powers and principalities. But he gave us keys so that we can open up the kingdom of heaven and shut down the ranks and minions of darkness of hell. Come on, somebody. We need to put hell in a lockdown today. And we need to release the glory of God to move in this place today. Amen, in the name of Jesus. So uh, I, I don't have a research department. The closest thing I have to a research department is my wonderful wife. She does lots of research, and sometimes she throws a nugget or two my way. She does it a lot. And I enjoy it so very much. So recently she came across a testimony from a minister by the name of James Koala. James Koala has, has found the key to unlock the misery and the distress and the torment of childhood autism. Okay, so in his testimony, he tells how that for years he would pray for autistic children and nothing would happen. Pray again, nothing would happen. Fast and pray, nothing would happen. Pray a long time, nothing. Short time, nothing. But then one day he received a call by a family that were absolutely at their wit's end because they had a child, if I remember correctly, some maybe 10 years old or thereabouts, that 
was in such uh, psychological and emotional and spiritual distress that his parents could hardly sleep a wink, that it drove a good father that really did love God to drinking because he just couldn't take the stress that it was bringing upon their home. So they reached out to the man of God and said, please come and pray. So this uh, pastor, James Koala, came to this home and when he walked through the doors, the Lord told him, uh, you're going to spend the night. So he told the family, he said, y'all go, go, go have a second honeymoon. Go have fun out on the town. I'm going to be here. I will stay the night with your child and pray. And so uh, busy he was pastoring a church. And so he thought, well, you know, I can, I can take a night. I can take a night of this to pray for deliverance. So he prayed. And the child was absolutely unmanageable. The child would, uh, would, 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 would wrestle him, would bite him, would vomit, would carry on hour after hour after hour. He'd try to sleep, and he would wake up to the child gnawing on his arm. You know, just terrific and almost unbearable uh, problems. But here's what made it even more interesting. The Lord said, you're going to stay again another night, and then another and then, and the mom and dad, they're just going. They finally had a break in life. And another night, and another. For 32, 32, now don't expect me to do this. I want to tell you right now, it would take God, not you. 32 nights he stayed in that home. He never left. They brought him food. He stayed and prayed and stayed and prayed. And on the 32nd night, the spirit that was controlling that little kid broke. He was calm. He was in his right mind. He was restored to sanity. He understood instructions. He developed manners. He submitted to authority. And God gave him the key to praying with others that are, were suffering from autism. I'm going to tell you, there are keys that unlock uh, some of the most sinister and most tormenting circumstances. But they don't come easy. But when God gives them to to us, there is no repentance. Once you get it, you got it. So whatever it takes to get it, remember this, once you get it, you got it. In Jesus' name, put your hands together. God wants to give somebody the key over depression in the name of Jesus. Somebody wants to give God the key over negative self-esteem in the name of Jesus. Reach out and get the key that will unlock your destiny. Oh my, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so Joseph is old now. You know, and he says to, him, to his descendants, I'm, I'm, I'm going to die. And he said, I want you to, you're going to live and you're going to get out of here and I want you to take my bones with you. You know, there's a, there is a life cycle of bones. I don't, I don't know what they call a, a bone specialist. I'm by no means that. But I have heard by way of just uh, anecdotal stories that when children are young, their characteristic of their bones is that they're, they're supple and they're bendable. And they're almost rubbery. And then when you reach full adulthood, they're strong. I marvel at people that can deadlift a thousand pounds. Do you know how much a thousand? That's almost like picking up a horse. And you would think that something would give way when you pick up that kind of weight, but there are people that can do it because the bones are and can become incredibly strong. And then in old age, of course, then there's the possibility for them to become brittle again. They say if you ever fall down and break a hip and you're older, you got to get up out of that chair just as quickly as you possibly can. Because if you sit there too long, 
you might not ever recover the strength that you otherwise could have. But Joseph said, I want you, when you go, I want you to carry my bones with you. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't carry anything with you that won't carry you. Here's the thing. If you're going to go camping, you got to take everything you're possibly going to need in that backpack. Because backpacks can be heavy. But there's a reason why they're heavy. Because the things that you carry into the wilderness are going to be things that carry you when the bitter wind blows. You need the sleeping bag. You need that little stove that you put the fuel and you pump it up to boil some water or a cup of soup when it gets cold out there. Come on, someone. You need the tools uh, of the trade to pitch the tent and to make ready. And you need some bear spray because you don't want to go out there. I've read too many stories. <laughs> and you want to practice with your bear spray can. Don't be a novice. Understand how the thing works. Pull the pin. <laughs> but my point is, you don't, you, the things that you're carrying, all of us are carrying stuff, but a lot of us are carrying things that won't carry us when the chips are down. You see, you're, you're carrying unforgiveness. How is that going to help you when you need to be forgiven? Look, you want to carry mercy with you so that when the day comes when you fall flat on your face, you can be able to say in the presence of God, as I have forgiven others, God, I need your forgiveness today. Some people carry bitterness. Bitterness isn't going to help you. Do you know there are some people that get so bitter that even if life turns to the good, amen, it doesn't change their disposition. They're programmed, amen, in this program of displeasure at life. And so no matter how many good things happen, they cannot be lifted out. The, what is amazing to me is suicide is more a phenomenon of the upper middle class than it ever was of the poor folk. You would have thought that if anyone thought life wasn't worth living, it'd be the ones that don't have enough to even barely make it. But usually the people that take their lives have reached the place where they have everything that a person could want, but it's not doing the job. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why you need to carry with you a generous spirit. Because if you have generosity in your heart toward others, toward God, toward your family, then good things will only make you more generous. But if you carry contempt and greed and lust for material things, and that's all that matters, it's not going to help you no matter what you get in this life. Don't carry anything that won't carry you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Some people pray only when they need God to do them a favor. If you live that way, when you really need God to come into your life, uh, you're not going to get the result that you would have gotten if prayer was something you did because you love the Lord. I'm not here today, God, to get anything out of you. I'm here for you to get something out of me. This is my opportunity to lift my voice and give God some honor and some praise today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so when well, Joseph, Hebrews 11, spoke of Joseph this way, he said, and Joseph, when he died, made mention concerning his bones, and he gave commandment. Everyone say commandment. Of all, now listen, of all of the th words and quotes that you think should have been available from Joseph's life, this is the only one you read throughout the word of God. Take my bones with you. I'm not asking. I'm telling you. Take my bones. That's it. That's the only quote you get from Joseph. Take my bones with you. Hallelujah. And so the first, the first skeletal key that I offer you is this. You cannot hope for a better future. You must 
demand, amen, for what you have in God to be taken into your future in the name of Jesus Christ. You must. He gave commandment. You don't. I refuse to leave my bones in the past. You're going, I'm going with you, dead or alive. I'm going into your destiny. What am I trying to say? Do you want a better 2024? Make a commandment concerning your future and say, I'm making it. First of all, I'll be there, amen, on December 31st, 2024. Hands in the air, shouting the victory, living for God, but I'll also be there with the spoils of God's promises in my hand because I am decreeing who. Don't just take what comes and make what comes by the words that come out of your mouth in prayer. I will be victorious. I will have a better income. My children will be on fire for God. My neighborhood will experience a move of the Spirit. Amen. My lost loved ones will be saved in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Give a commandment. Give a commandment. Make a decree. Say it out loud in Jesus' name. There was no great memorial organized around Joseph's passing by the Egyptians that had honored him so greatly in years previous. Perhaps the storm of Joseph's ultimate rejection was already beginning to gather because there was one Pharaoh that rose up that knew not Joseph. Because he knew not Joseph, he neglected the children of Israel. And then the hardship of their bondage began. And then the pain and suffering of brick making and hours of laborious tasks under the scourge of the taskmaster. But it was then that Joseph, it wasn't when he was in his prime, it was when he was watching as the candle of life was quickly ebbing, he gave commandment concerning his bones. Some people can only say positive things in a positive context. Some people can only talk about what God can do when he's doing, how great things God can do when he's doing great things. Show me a man or a woman that can live, can see the shadows quickly gathering. Show me a man like Joseph who already senses there's powers that be that aren't going to treat me favorably. And if my favor falls out of fashion with them, it's perhaps going to fall out of fashion with the children of God. But they won't be here long, but I'm going with them because you're going to take my bone. Somebody that can make a decree when the chips are down. Anybody can tell how great God is uh, when you get a ma magnificent tax return. But what are you going to do when you owe a tax bill? Are you going to lose your victory? Or are you going to shout because God helped you to make enough that you did owe more than you thought you did? Come on, there's always a reason to shout. Show me someone that can shout in the valley. Show me someone that can shout in the midnight hour. Show me somebody that can say what God can do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, I feel the Holy Ghost power. Let me hurry. There's something they call terminal lucidity. Researchers have studied people, especially with brain diseases, strokes. Well, I read a little piece from... Uh, from uh, Psychology Today, it says this, terminal lucidity has been found in individuals with dementia, brain tumors, strokes, mental illnesses such as schizophrenia, etc. These are people who one would think would be the least likely to have an experience of clarity. Yet many times, just before their passing, it all comes back to them. People that hadn't been able to carry on a conversation with a loved one for years, all of a sudden will remember their favorite food, will remember life events, will laugh over circumstances that they shared, will recognize the faces and names of every family member in the room. They call it terminal lucidity. 
I don't know. You know what? You say, scientifically, they don't know what to do with it. Spiritually, I know exactly what to do with it. Your mind is not contained in just the gray matter here. There is something called consciousness that transcends the body and the bodily organs. Just get used to it. It's real. Sometimes there's a God. There's a spirit. Amen. There's a mind. Amen. There's revelation. There's inspiration. There's power. Yes, the brain is a useful tool, but it's not all contained in the brain. There's something called the spirit that goes back to God who gave it. And I'm going to tell you something. If your world is cluttered with problems that you can't see any way out of, there's something called a word from the Lord. Oh, if anybody ought to have spiritual lucidity, no matter what you're going through, it ought to be a Holy Ghost-filled people of God. When was the last time you asked him, God, do you have a word for me in this circumstances? Ask and you shall receive. You have not because you ask. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody ask him for a word. Somebody get a word. Somebody get an inspiration. Somebody get a connection. I'm weak. It's, 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 it's tough. But he got a word. He had a, <laughs> Joseph took that one last shot to redirect his destiny. Oh. Not just what you say, but what you say with vigor. What you say with gusto. What you say unapologetically. Has a, has a bearing on your destiny. My God, in the name of Jesus. You know why you scream? Because you're either real mad or real glad. Yeah. <laughs> you know what the Bible says about this, this experience with God? It's joy unspeakable and full of glory. And you wonder why we get so excited in the house of God. Let me hurry. Jeremiah's bones will carry you in your present. Joseph's bones will carry you into your future. Jeremiah's bones will help you sustain yourself in your present. Jeremiah was beaten. Jeremiah was ridiculed. Jeremiah was not just underappreciated. He was vilified for the word that God gave him concerning Israel because he was the one that would be God's spokesman to tell them, guess what, you're not getting out of here. This time you're going to be defeated. This time the Babylonians are going to come and they're going to march you away into captivity. It's payback season now. All of the things you took for granted now, God is going to demand them. They didn't like that message. They didn't want that message. And so they decided to terminate the messenger. Stocks, bonds, ridicule, kangaroo courts, false trials, physical beatings. Boy, the devil will give you enough reasons to change your story if that's what you want to do. But the beauty of Jeremiah said, I tried to keep my mouth shut. Every time I opened my mouth, it was the same thing, and they didn't like it. They're pulling their hair out. They're pulling my hair out. They're about to kill me. I said, okay, God, that's enough. I'm not going to preach anymore. But then he said, the pressure started building. I don't care how much trouble living for God has gotten me into with the demon forces that are attacking me. I will not relinquish my responsibility to praise him. It was like fire that you can't put out. I'm sorry I can't shut up. No matter how much it hurts, Hurts, uh, no matter how much it's protested, I'm going to let this fire burn. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. We're living in a society. If it can be ridiculed out of you, it will be. If it can be knocked out of you, it will be. If Jesus could be legislated out of you, it will be. But as for me and my house, we're going to stand and let the fire burn. Come on, somebody, let the fire burn. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to his testimony. You deceived me, Lord, and I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long. Everybody mocks me. Whenever I speak, I cry out, proclaiming violence and destruction. So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. But if I say, I will not mention his word, nor speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire. A fire shut up in my bones. I'm weary of holding it in. Hey, it's harder not to shout than it is to let go and let God have his way. I can't take this complacency anymore. I gotta praise the Lord. So he said later on, he said, but the Lord is with me like a mighty warrior. So my persecutors will stumble and not prevail. Sing unto the Lord. Give praise to the Lord. He rescues the life of the needy and from the hands of the wicked. Hallelujah. For he did not kill me in the womb. You want something to be pr- praise God for? Thank God you're not dead yet. Hallelujah. Thank God hell hit you with his best punch and didn't stop your worship. Fire. You need fire. You need fire to make it through. Hey, you need fire to make it through the rest of the day. All right. Then Ezekiel 37. And the Lord's Spirit picked him up and put him in a valley. You ever had the Holy Ghost? You want to go to the third heaven. Looks like he dropped you off on the third hell. So what in the world happened here? I don't know what the deal was with our kids in car seats, but it was crying and protesting all the way to church and crying and protesting all the way back. But sometimes God picks you up and drops you in a valley. You know what the valley of dry bones represented? A past defeat. What that was was an army slain in battle that nobody respected the corpses even enough to bury them, but just let them to languish and bleach in the desert sun and their bodies to be picked apart by scavengers. God takes us to past defeat sometimes to reveal the... Look, you know, if we don't know our own history, we're going to just repeat it over and over again. I wish I could forget the times that I failed God. Maybe that's... Maybe that's asking for a bit too much because maybe just by fact that you can remember where you made mistakes before will prevent you from doing it again. Isn't that what wisdom is all about? Isn't that what learning is? Oh, don't do that. I, I've done that. I've been there. I've done, done, done that. And that's not how it works. So God does that to reveal the history of defeat so we don't get defeated again. He emphasizes the misery of defeat so that we don't want to feel that way about ourselves again. And then he takes us to the valley sometimes to show us the mystery of defeat. Son of man, I want us to stand. Can these bones live? You got to see a graveyard, a battlefield strewn with hundreds, perhaps thousands of of emaciated corpses, bodies, bones scattered everywhere. Can these bones live? Why would the spirit pick him up and put him in a valley full of dead bones and then ask him the question, can these bones live? Because every one of you are going to be taken to this place in life. And that is where there's questions that only God has the answer for. I want you to lift your hand right now. Somebody has a question that only God has the answer for. 
Why am I up and down and in and out and backwards and forwards? God, you know. Why was I born with feelings like I have and inclinations like I have? God, you know. Hallelujah. Why was I raised in a family that practiced witchcraft and Ouija board and, and crystals and eight balls and everything else? God, you know. Hallelujah. 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 God's got an answer for somebody's question here today. And there's questions in your life that only God can answer. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the Spirit of the Lord want to touch somebody. But the, if, you, if you can say, God, you know, then you can prophesy to the wreckage that you see before you. It's when you can speak. The Lord said, now, son of man, prophesy. Joseph's secret was command your future. Jeremiah's secret was keep the fire burning. Ezekiel's bones tell us the story. Speak to the dead things until they come back to life again. Hallelujah. Everybody pray. Precious God, in the name of Jesus, I speak life over this congregation. Somebody whose joy has been long dead and gone, they're going to speak. They're going to speak to that joy center, that it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Someone's marriage looks like it's drying up and withering on the vine. Speak to it. Speak to it. Speak to it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your health seems to go, be going, getting, going from bad to worse and the prognosis isn't good. Speak to it. Speak to it in the name of Jesus. Prophesy. Prophesy to, the, prophesy to those bones. Prophesy what's missing and it'll come to life in the name of Jesus. If you, if you need, if you need God, if you need God to do miraculous things in 2024, I want you to come up here and claim it right now. We'll just close this service claiming a miracle, claiming a breakthrough, claiming a word from God. Hallelujah.